Well, there's a story about a, about a fisherman, an older guy, a fisherman who was very successful. And every, every morning he went out in his boat and he wasn't out there more than a couple of hours. And each day he would come back with his boat just loaded over with fish, fish piled really high. And no one else around that lake was catching anything. And so, of course, they naturally wondered how he was doing it. So one morning, just before he set out, a stranger showed up with fishing tackle and pole in hand, and the stranger asked him, said, do you mind if I go, go out fishing with you this morning? And the fisherman said, well, just hop right in. That's fine. You, you can come out with me. We'll go to my, to my secret cove where I've been having really good luck. And so they go out across the lake, and they go around a bend, and they pull into this cove where the the fisherman had been going each day, and then the older fisherman turned off the engine on his, his, uh, his boat, and he reached into his tackle box, and he pulled out a red stick of dynamite. He took his lighter, and he lit the dynamite, and he let the fuse burn down just, just far enough, and he threw it out into the water, and kaboom, there was a massive explosion, and there was fish everywhere and fish floating on the surface of the water they had killed them and so he began with his net scooping up the fish and putting them in the boat and the stranger was just taking all this in dumbfounded and the stranger reached for his wallet and produced a badge and he said to the fisherman he says i am the state game warden and you are under arrest well, the fisherman didn't say anything. He just reached back into his tackle box again and pulled out another stick of dynamite. And he lit it and waited for the fuse to burn down. And this time he tossed it over to the game warden and landed in the warden's lap. And the fisherman said, well, are you just going to sit there or are you going to fish? Today is about making decisions important decisions, life-altering decisions. That game warden had a decision to make that was potentially anatomically altering, but the decisions that we're talking about today are no less important, although on a bit of a different scale. Zacchaeus had reached a crossroads in his life where he had very important decisions to make. Zacchaeus was a tax collector in the ancient Near East. Tax collectors, long story short, in that particular time and place, they operated without much oversight and without really any regulations or guidelines. So they just, they were kind of, they were kind of renegade, a lot of them, and a lot of them cheated people, and Zacchaeus did this as well. But when Jesus came to his town of Jericho, Zacchaeus had a change of heart. He decided that from then on, he was going to start giving to the poor. And he was to give high interest monetary refunds to people whom he had defrauded over the years. Zacchaeus had an encounter with Jesus that changed who he was as a person, right down to the core of his very soul. Now fast forward about 1,500 years after that, different part of the world in the region of Saxony in Germany. And there was an Augustinian monk and Catholic priest by the name of Martin Luther, who was also facing some important decisions. And it all, it all had to do with the person of Jesus Christ. Luther, recently minted professor of theology, had been reading in the Bible and he saw in the Bible that Jesus Christ is the one who forgives sins, and a person appropriates that forgiveness for themselves when they put their faith in Christ. And this did not square with the practice that at that time the Catholic Church was, was engaging in. The Catholic Church at that time and in that place was selling people a little piece of paper that said they had X number of sins forgiven, and as a result of that, they were relieved of having to spend X number of years in purgatory. If you lived in that particular time and place, you could purchase one of these for yourself 
or you could purchase it for a loved one who was recently deceased. It was a basically a get out of purgatory card, except it wasn't free. You had to pay a certain amount of, of money for this. It was called an indulgence. Luther saw this, and this is what was so troubling to him. In fact, Luther butted heads with Pope Leo X's chief indulgence salesman in that particular area in the region of Saxony, a guy by the name of Johann Tetzel. Now, Tetzel had a flair for the dramatic. He was, he, this guy could pitch indulgences like he wouldn't believe. He had people accompany him who could play the drums. They would play the drums loudly as Tetzel went up on the stage. And Tetzel would really, he would just lay it on thicker than molasses. He would start uh, laying a guilt trip on people. He would say, don't you want to rescue your loved ones who are in purgatory? Can't you imagine your dear sainted old mother or your father or your grandparents? Even now the flames are licking their bodies as they are in torment. I mean, he would just spread it, lay it on thicker than, than you can imagine. In fact, he had a, a sales pitch. He would tell them because they would line up then to put money in this metal box called a coffer. Tetzel would say to the people, as soon as a coin in the coffer rings, another soul from purgatory springs. Very effective. People don't fall for stuff quite like that these days because they've had enough of the, the late at night infomercials and they know that people tell lies on TV. But at that particular time and place, people lined up far and wide to purchase an indulgence. Now, at that time, the funds from the indulgence sales were, it was a fundraiser. They were being used to fund a building project, namely St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Parenthetically, a note to the admin board, don't try this, find a different fundraising method. We, we should not do that here. We are, after all, Protestants. But Luther, Luther opposed this because A, it wasn't biblical, and because B, the people were being swindled. So Luther had a decision to make. Keep in mind, he was a loyal Catholic, good Catholic boy. Should he remain loyal to the Pope and just kind of turn a, a blind eye to the indulgence sales? Or should he stand on the word of God and oppose the sale of indulgences? Well, the fact that you and I are here today in this church we call St. Paul is evidence of the latter. The Protestant Reformation forever changed Western civilization. Not only did it split the church, but it also challenged and fundamentally changed people's relationship with authority. Luther's protest against the papacy paved the way for future reform movements all across the world. Believe it or not, including even our own war for independence, when we separated from the British crown and we stopped being colonies and we became the United States of America. America's founders were, were inspired in part by the Protestant Reformation and how Luther stood up to the Pope because that taught the world forever that authority can be questioned and authority can be challenged, particularly when that authority has, been, has become corrupt and oppressive. But most important of all, and this is our takeaway for today, what we take with us this week, Luther taught the people to stop putting their their blind trust in man-made rules and instead put it in the Bible. If you had to choose between a man-made, made-up rule and what the Bible says, go with the Bible. And he also taught the people to stop putting their trust in a Roman pontiff and instead put it in the person of Jesus Christ. It's about making important decisions. Luther chose Jesus in the Bible over the papacy and man-made decrees. Zacchaeus of Jericho chose Jesus in repentance over his previous life as a tax collector. 
And each of us is faced with a decision as well. What will we decide about the Christ? Is he our Lord and Savior, just as it says in the UCC Book of Worship, in the membership section? Or is he merely moral exemplar? That's a choice that all of us have to make. There's a story out of Persia, an ancient story about a general who had a strange custom. This general would give condemned criminals a choice. As the time of their execution drew near, the general would call them and he would say, you have a choice, the firing squad or the big black door. He gave that to each one of them. One particular man he called in and said, what will it be, firing squad or the big black door? And the man thought and thought for a moment, and he chose the firing squad. And moments later, shots rang out, confirming his choice. And the general turned to his aide, and he said to him, they always prefer the known way over the unknown. That's why so many of them take the firing squad, because they choose the known over the unknown, which scares them more. And the aide asked him, well, what's behind the big black door? And the general said, freedom. But I've only known very few who have been brave enough to make that choice. It takes a certain amount of courage, I suppose, too, to decide for Christ in your life, especially in a world like ours where Christians really don't receive a whole lot of respect. But Christ, John 10, 9, says that he is the door through which we enter to be saved and in which we obtain true freedom, especially freedom for our souls. Zacchaeus of Jericho discovered that, as did Martin Luther of Saxony. May each of us discover that as well. Amen. Thank you.